reading a rule book. And if you get really good with the rules, I mean, excellent with the rules, guess what? Your play calling is going to go off the charts because you're going to be confident. You're going to know what to call and what not to call and what, and basically you're going to learn how to discern. And when you read the rule book, you know, I like to address it like a novel, read it like a law document. Each rule has a theme. For example, is um, rule one, you know, coming on the, it's basically equipment, but it's coming on the floor. And that's when the, the game really um, starts. You know, do you come on professionally? Are you aware when you come on the floor? Do you find your clocks, where your shot clock is, where the scoring table is, you know? Um, some course, the whiffs might be smaller than um, than others. It's not always going to be a perfect 94 by 50 or 84 by 50. You know, is it less than 84 by 50? And, you know, things of that nature. You know, are you coming on and, and you're, are you professional? Are you are you watching your three point shooters on um, what three point line are we playing with tonight? If we're working a federation game, you could have, you know, a rectangular backboard. You could have a fan shape backboard, which, which you really never see anymore. Um, watch illegal footwork. I mean, count your players. So there's a lot of – rule one has a lot of detailed awareness with it. So when you come on the floor using my rule book knowledge, I'm just not coming on the floor. I'm getting ready for the, the game, you know, and so on. Rule two is game management and clock management and game awareness. And again, you know, you, you, you're going to have to, you, you're going to have to know the personality of your table, um, your score, your timer, your shot clock operator. Are they experienced? Are they new? Are they know-it-alls and things like that? Um, the, the most, probably the most important rule, rule two is correct aware and you, you don't want this to happen. So, you know, is so, for example, um, you have to know the bonus and you have to, when you call a foul, you have to make sure they put that foul up. Um, you know, get your shooters, especially after timeouts, because during a timeout, they could switch shooters during a timeout. Um, technical foul, you know, team officiating, get that official going in the right direction. Versus two or two versus three. You know, um, and that has to go over. Rule three, too, is game management because it deals with rosters and awareness. And you have to know your substitution awareness, like who's coming out and who's coming in the game and who's coming out of the game. You go, well, why is that important? Well, it's important because anytime there's a substitution in the game, guess what, everybody? It changes your personality of the game. Okay, Each game has its own personality, but... Just think about it. The three-point shooter comes in. Well, the game's going to probably widen out. The shot blocker comes in. I have to be patient here. The defensive specialist comes in. The player that comes in to give, like, the Federation game is a strategic foul. The NBA calls it a take foul. Um, and, and, and the NCAA doesn't really have a name for it, but we all say take foul. But I have to know why they're coming in the game. Um, and I have to know my voice is a reason. And usually that's the captain, but it's not all the times the captain. I have to pick that out. And a voice is a reason is someone that I can go to on the court that maybe can that settle that team down or talk to or whatever. So there's a really a lot going on rule three, just not reading the rule. Rule four, four is definitions, but it has a little to do with everything. It has to do with play calling it has to do with game procedures it has to do with game awareness and you know when you referee at any level you have to be very proficient in procedures okay you have to be able to minister the jump ball and in the amateur game you only have <clears throat> one in the beginning of the game and each overtime in the FIBA game you only have one in, in the professional game, you know, you, 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 have, um, you, you have a lot of them. And, and, uh, but anyway, you have to be proficient in administering a, a jump ball, a throw in and a free throw. You have to know when the ball becomes alive, which we're going to allude to in a little bit later. Rule five is scoring, um, is protecting the shooter. It's clock awareness. Again, it's timeouts. And that's and, and again, you know, if you look at a lot of this, it's basically running the game. Do you run the game or does the game run you? You know, when does the clock start? When does the clock start to jump ball? When does the ball become alive on a jump ball? 
you know, things like that. And rule six, again, procedures, everybody, you got to be good in procedures. Another thing we should be thinking of when we're reading the rule book or administering, you know, a throwing or free throw sweeping the floor. And these are basics. You know, look at your table, look at your um, partners, um, uh, look at your clocks on a free throw, make sure the first spots are occupied by the opponents. You have to know your AP or, <coughs> excuse me, in live ball, dead ball. It's so important in the amateur game, live ball, dead ball. Because we, we go back to rule four again, because you have contact when the ball is live, <coughs> illegal contact, you have a personal foul. You have contact when the ball's dead, um, you have a technical foul. So, you know, things like that. So throw-ins, again, procedures, you know, where, where are we, where are we um, taking the ball out on a violation foul? Because it's a little bit different in NCAA than it is in Fed. Um, and um, same with free throws. Um, you know, who's our shooter? Who can, who shoots personals? Um, who shoots technicals? Do I get my shooter? And so on. And rule nine basically is violations, is play, play calling. And um, you have to know your violations. And, and um, in fact, you have three violations. You have free throw violations, you have floor violations, and you have basket violations. Rule 10 is play calling, fouls, and penalties. You have to know your penalties. In fact, Review your penalties before each game, um, even though they might be so basic. And then in, in NCAA, um, uh, and, uh, we go into instant replay. If we go a little further on, which I don't cover in this presentation, but a lot of you I know are in the pipeline system um, for the NBA, you have to master rule 12A and you have to master 12B. 12A is technical fouls, 12B is personal fouls. It's a little bit different than the amateur game. And then in the NBA game, you have to master replays. And there's 14 situations where you can go to replay. 